<laughs> Five, <laughs> four. T minus. <laughs> cough, cough, cough. Cough now. Um, so, hi, Justin. Hey, Heather. How's it going? <laughs> it's going very coffee here. I'm feeling very Winstonian. That's, my, that's not my new word. <laughs> your, your new word? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little uh, banged up as well, but we're recording, and that's, that's a right. good thing. That's right. We have a reason to get out of bed Wednesday morning. Exactly. If if it weren't for this, I would probably be like suffocating under a bunch of blankets and Yeah. I do, however, have my cup of tea. Ooh. To and that, mitigate. It has a hat. Cancer. It does. It's a cool <laughs> it's, little it's the, a little silicone hat too that has a little can you see the little um cutout yeah. in it? So it also has a cutout. I'm going to drip tea all over the place. The lid part has a little cut outy part, too. So you can string the tea bag top, the little stringy part, through yeah. that and lift the whole thing out and flip it. And all the drippy tea bag drips into that the is reservoir. Really cool. On the lid. I know. Ooh. I need one of those. Right? They're on, they're on Amazon. I'll put a link in the show notes. <laughs> perfect because they're so awesome but yeah if i don't have my tea i will be coughing so i don't want to do that to you or anyone else one thing that kind of struck me as sort of odd perhaps quasi relevant to now is mm -hmm. the having your calisthenics like monitored is mm -hmm. something that Kind of reminded me a bit of incentivized healthcare to a degree, <clears throat> and the discussions around that. I um, edit a podcast, Denim Rivet, that deals with a lot of insurance tech and stuff like that. Oh, wow. And the idea and I stuff being talked about, you know, in terms of like having your health and exercise and stuff like that monitored to change the rate of your insurance and stuff. Um, is kind of like a real thing being tossed around, and especially now with, in terms of like larger scale health insurance at large. Um, you mean my, which my is Fitbit? Yeah, your Fitbit right there. Being connected to Cigna, it's tracking how much wine you're drinking, and so I can be proud of myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, I find it uh, it it's creepy. And I don't want it to happen. <laughs> so yeah. I, I just stay out of, you know, well, I feel it's... bad enough about my the things I do to my body. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need, don't uh, need your, the party your government going, being like, all right, comrade Justin, put that beer down. <laughs> I would be so distressed. That would be, that would be really, really awful. Well, and it's, it's also, um, it's one of those things where you, at first I thought it was such a strange thing, but then I thought, well, no, the the government has made an investment in Winston. Presumably they've educated him or re-educated him, and now he's performing a, a task for them. And so that's um, it's important for him to be healthy enough to stay alive and do his job. And I suppose I, I get that, but it seemed kind of strange to me because it to me, it makes more sense within the framework of a capitalist system that you would want to ensure that your working, your workers or your working class, or anyone who's working for you, you would want them to be as healthy as possible because healthier, happier workers work better, longer, faster, stronger. We can rebuild him. We can make him better than he was before. Yeah. And it's, and it's not, it's not something that we, we don't do a whole lot in our current capitalist system. We don't do a whole lot of investing in the future. But back in 1870, uh, Elizabeth Gaskell wrote, or maybe, no, it was earlier than that, 1840. She wrote a book called North and South about England, where the North would was the mining, uh, Yorkshire uh, mining country, and the South was London. And the conflict, class conflict, between the two parts of the country. And it got, I mean, the book is amazing. It gets into the religious problems and the economic problems. But fundamentally, the mill owners at the time 
just looked at their workers as cog, cogs in a wheel. Yeah. You know, one dies, you get another one because they're always having children, you know, those people. And there's, oh, there's a lot of anti-Irish stuff going on there too because, you know, they always have all those children. And if one dies, who cares because you've always got another one on the way. And I'm not joking about that. That's yeah. actually stated. Um, and then the the whole big thing in her book is one mill owner comes along and says, what do you mean the people don't have enough to eat? So he builds a canteen. He builds, builds a, like a pub for his workers so they can be insured of at least having one hot meal a day with meat in it. And the other mill owners are horrified. You know, why would you why would you bother investing in the future? Yeah. And so him doing the calisthenics is Big Brother investing in the future. Cause right. And you know, he has to do it with you. the kind of um Gr- grim this... enthusiasm. Grim in <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Grim enthusiasm. Uh, it's terrible. Yeah. Like he, he's so paranoid about the slightest bit of um, disdain coming across his face and him being looked into because of it. Yeah. I cannot imagine living like that. Constantly, constantly under surveillance like that. That's where Handmaid's Tale gets interesting, too. There's some there's some good stuff in there. And I had, oh, he t- he mentions uh, Airstrip One, uh, having been England, which we know, and part of Oceania, which we know. Um, he talks about a atomic bomb being dropped on Colchester. Yeah. So I looked it up, because I'm thinking, he, he uses his language so specifically. There's no way that Colchester wasn't chosen for a reason. Here's what I think. I have no proof. I looked at it on a map, and it is north east of London. Not not terribly close, not terribly far, and it is absolutely unremarkable. Interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at it right here. Yeah, they do have. They do evidently. Uh, they got famous for an iron industry. They uh, were well known for being uh, makers of diesel diesel. Engines. Um, University of Essex is there, but that wasn't started until like 1960. Right. Your uh, your note there sums it up. Famous for nothing. Yep. Makes diesel engines. Done. Um, it's. I'm sure it's a lovely place. I think it was chosen because it's just a place. Yeah. And and not only that, but at the time, one that was manufacturing metal things. So if you want to control the means of production. Uh, drop bombs on the places that are making things. It's very creepy. And and now people are just going to have to remain creeped out until next week. Yep. Uh, where we get a bit of what Winston's good old daily grind. Yeah. Memory holes and yeah. <laughs> speak rights and... Uh, all the good stuff. Brazil, Brazil. If you haven't watched Brazil, you have to go. You have yeah. to go watch that. Movie. This this uh, weekend is the weekend to watch Brazil. Right. Um, it's definitely one hilarious. My father thinks it's one of the funniest movies he's ever seen. Uh, and Cri- I, a cringeworthy humor or <laughs> just uh, I don't know. All the dream sequences and stuff really. He just loses it over that kind of thing. So and by the way. Who loved H.G. Wells? I'm looking side to side. Uh, let me guess. Orwell. Oh, yes. Got it in one. Yep. Yep. In fact, he considered 1984 to be a science fiction book. I can, because it was yeah. both fiction and in the future. I, I agree with that sentiment. I do. It's good sci-fi. It is good sci-fi. It's good it's not, sci-fi um, that make, makes him think. Yep. The thinky-thinky kind. <laughs> the thinky-thinky kind. All right. Well, have uh, have good thinks. And I'll, yes. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a week. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> that sounds like a threat. <laughs> sounds like a... I will see you in a... 
comrade. I'll be watching you. <laughs> That's all we need. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Adios. Ciao.